I'm here in the forest next door, so to speak, to mine, to show you another American chestnut tree in a similar situation to the one that I've been talking about in the last couple of videos on the snowshoe trail. It's similar in some ways and different in some ways. The similarity is that this right here is the zombie pole tree sized, very small pole, chestnut tree that has now, as, as you can see, it's long dead. And here is a sucker that made it to about five feet tall and succumbed to the blight. It's only as thick as my pinky finger. And here we see one, two, three, four, five little tiny suckers that are now emerging from it to keep trying. And this looks like it's been dead for at least probably 10 to 20 years, this top part that made this pull. The reason that I'm showing you this is because a couple of people asked me, how is it possible for that snowshoe trail chestnut, I guess that's what I'll call it from now on, to still be alive after a hundred years? And the reason why is clearly illustrated with this one here. It's growing right at the big toe here of a red oak. In fact, here's a swamp white oak that's growing right beside another toe of this giant red oak. And as you know, if you've seen my other videos about the Miracle Sisters chestnut tree, there is something miraculous about the way that they love to connect with red oaks. And so what's happening is that this chestnut tree merged its root system with the root system of this red oak. And with other neighboring trees, like another red oak right there. There's a lot of red oaks in this spot, actually. And it's well known that in a forest, trees sometimes will keep the root system of a dead tree, let's call it a zombie tree, alive. They'll actually expend energy to keep that root system alive. I see it all the time in my forest. With trees, in fact, just a couple of years ago, there was a three, I believe, sisters, red maple, of considerable size. And the wind, the crazy wind that we have now, blew down two of the sisters, leaving only the one in the center, which by the way, just this year has now blown down as well. It's being held up by another one. It's in the vernal pools, which are filled with giants. And so when the first one fell a few years ago, I cut it into firewood because it fell right onto the ground and it was conveniently near the trail. And for years since then, that is still alive. And in the spring, it actually has sap pouring out of it, even though it's a cut stump. So you see trees in a 
true forest support each other. And that's one of the reasons why it's so vitally important for us to preserve the large trees, the old trees in the forest, because they, through their extensive root network, are supporting the other trees as well. And this is critical now more than ever because of our changing climate and the extreme droughts that we have pretty much on an annual basis here now. And it's that cooperation, that sharing of resources between the trees that will help the younger trees to survive through these crises. They're depending on, the, on those giants to keep them alive. This is why it's, I have no other word for it, stupid, the way that in our society today, there's this notion of environmentalism where forests are completely clear cut and then filled with a monoculture of seedlings. That's so stupid. I need a word that's far beneath stupid because it's just ridiculous. This is what's required. You have to have diversity, diversity of species and diversity of ages. Intermixed and just letting nature take its course. Now, <laughs> as it seems to be with my videos nowadays, I have a second topic to tell you about. This very typical system here, where once it has the blight and succumbs to it, it sends up the sucker, is only one of the strategies that the American chestnut uses to try to survive. And this is an example of another one, and it's right over there. So let's go over there so I can show you. I'm just a few feet from the tree, right over there. And look here. It's hard to see it now, especially because it's been chewed by a deer. But this is a very small chestnut tree. This is a root sprout. The root from that tree reaches out to here and then up it sends a sprout growing off of the root and a new tree grows even though it's the same tree. It's just sending up a sprout at the end of a root. This very same thing happened with the grandmother chestnut tree a couple of years ago. In fact, let's go over there so I can show you. This is a little tiny chestnut tree growing just a few feet from the zombie Miracle Sisters chestnut. No, <laughs> the grandmother. I don't know why I confused her with her, but at any rate, let me just uncover this. Still a little tiny bit of green there. 
not much, but a bit. Still hanging on. This was a little bit of a mystery to me when I first spotted it because my first instinct was it must have been from a chestnut that she dropped. Did this block your view? I thought it must have been from a chestnut that she dropped, but it didn't make any sense because there weren't any flowers on her that year at all. So how could she have produced a nut? It's one thing to be self-pollinating like the Miracle Sisters tree did this year. And hopefully for many years to come, knock on wood. But to have no flowers at all, how could she possibly have produced a nut? And then I realized, well, what the? Obviously, this is a root sprout. I was, wasn't even thinking of that because she produced another root sprout the year before, the very year before, on the other side of the trail. And so I thought to myself, well, she likes to produce them far, far away. Why would she make them nearby? But obviously, that's exactly what happened here. So let me now take you to see the other root sprout from her. I'm nowhere near the grandmother chestnut tree right now. I'm actually in my chestnut grove that I've created in a different part of the forest where almost everything in terms of these chestnuts that are planted here are from the nuts that I sprouted from the Miracle Sisters tree. This is the exception. This was a root sprout that popped up on the other side of the trail from the grandmother. She's right beside the trail further down that way, quite a distance. And I was just so surprised one day at this time of year, a few years ago, when I spotted that beautiful little bunch of green leaves that said, here's a chestnut. And it was straight across the trail, maybe 15 or 20 feet. And you probably already know that as a rule of thumb, whatever the reach out from the branches of the tree, that's basically how far the root system goes. And so if the top of the tree is stretching across the trail, then so too are the roots. And so this little beautiful chestnut started growing on the other side of the, of the trail. And I carefully dug it out. I had to slice through the, the root, of course, to separate it, but it was already branching out with little roots of its own off of that main root. So I cut that and I transplanted it here. And now I'll just uncover the top of it here with my deer protection. And look at that. There's still a little tiny bit of green on that top leaf. And on this one too, just a subtle little hint of green still coming through. Very happy. This is beautiful. And so, even though this is growing a thousand feet away from the grandmother tree, which is now a zombie, not dead, I won't say that anymore. It's going to take a while for me to break that habit of calling them dead when they've succumbed to the blight. They're just resting and waiting to push up some, a new arm. 
And so this arm from the grandmother is growing a thousand feet away where she'll be able to hold hands with this sugar maple that is hopefully being kept alive by that gargantuan sugar maple right over there with the I'm standing underneath that one's branches right now. So its roots are coming all the way to here. So never mind this one. This chestnut is already made friends with that monster sugar maple and making a new network. There's a miracle sister's baby directly across the trail. And so it'll be a few years yet, but one day they will be holding hands right under, underfoot. What more can I say on this incredibly beautiful day? Let's hope that November will be just as nice. <laughs>